General Secretary Gorbachev, if you seek peace, if you seek prosperity for the Soviet Union and Eastern Europe, if you seek liberalization, come here to this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, open this gate. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. In 1989, Blake Purcell and his wife Kathy felt God leading them to become missionaries in the Soviet Union. Listen as Blake Purcell explains in an interview with Kevin Swanson of Generations with Vision. In 1990, when we moved there, I had already been in ministry with the Navigators at the Air Force Academy in Texas A&M. And what we did was we got a small group of students, they were all non-Christians of course, and uh, lo and behold, the men and the women in our study group began to confess Christ. And so. 
I, I already uh, had experienced the power of the Word of God, but I tell you, it really blew me away when I saw lives transformed just from opening the Bible and discussing it, and me not even really having to, quote, preach, because at that point in time I couldn't preach, my Russian was not good enough. And those, those original guys that came to Christ, and girls that came to Christ, about ten girls and about ten guys, they began to marry each other, they were the only Christians they knew, and now about five of those couples have three to five kids each. My name is Oleg Volkov. I am a pastor of Presbyterian Church Annunciation Pushkin. I met Blake Purcell 2000. Although I had some kind of theological uh, education, I understood that I had to study more. My friend told me about a reformed seminary in St. Petersburg. The first thing I understood when I became a student of the seminary was a very serious approach towards uh, education. It was very difficult but very blessed time in my life. The second uh, thing I understood was that seminary focuses uh, not only education, but on personal life of each student and his character. In 1999, when we opened up the seminary, it was really a discipling center in the context of Reformed theology. And the heart of what we're doing is still 2 Timothy 2.2 2 and Ezra 7, 9, and 10. What you've heard from me before many witnesses in trust of faithful men who will be able to teach others also, 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, and Ezra 7, 9, and 10. It says, Ezra set his heart to study the law of the Lord and to do it and to teach his statutes and his ordinances in Israel. Theological and practical knowledge uh, were uh, very useful and still helps me in my pastoral ministry in church. So at first it was a full-time seminary, and then about four years ago we began an extension course. And the reason we have this extension course is because after we train men locally, we realized if we brought men in from churches from the former Soviet Union in all four of the countries, Russia, the Ukraine, Kazakhstan, and Belarus, if we brought them in for three years, their churches would probably die. Because a typical church in the former Soviet Union is 10 men and 50 women, or 3 men and 20 women. There's just not much male leadership. So now we bring them in twice a year for two weeks, and then in between those two-week intensive courses, we uh, have on li live online classes. Uh, on brothers here and I'm from a Muslim country he says uh, well two times in the past year we have been arrested and the second time they held us for 24 hours uh, he said the, the police are constantly invading our meetings uh, whenever we have a larger me uh, a large meeting and the police 
uh, fined them all total eleven thousand dollars. That's a huge amount of money. He says, uh, well, their vision is that they will continue to serve the Lord even though there's continuing persecution going on. And he says that once. I am talking with you from Karaganda, Kazakhstan. I am the Dean of Students of the Biblical Theological Seminary in St. Petersburg. I graduated the seminary in 2011. I would like to introduce you to my family. This is my wife, Saule, and four children, Adele, Slava, Vera, and Margarita. We are expecting a new baby in a couple of weeks. This fall, Dr. Rob Rayburn of Faith Presbyterian Church in Tacoma, Washington, will lecture at our intensive course on apologetics. For the intensive course, we will need to raise $15,000 by September 1st. Additionally, for the past three years, Slavic Reformation Society has focused on raising support for our ministers, church planters, and eight of them now are generously funded. An amazing answer from the Lord and from you. Right now we need to raise the $2,500 per month. This will support the year-round ministry and allow us to be able to organize the intensive courses. Let me ask you uh, to prayfully consider making a pledge to support Slavic Reformation Society for 100 per month by August 15. Please pray for the Lord to move people's hearts so that we can take advantage of these ministry opportunities for preaching the Word of God and growing the church across nine time zones of uh, Eurasia. If you and your church would like to give to this need, go to the Slavic Reformation Society website donation page. Thank you. Jehovah, oh my soul, Jehovah. 
Butterflies. We have tried very hard to create a home that our children can grow and be disciples. И мы старались создать такой дом, где бы, в котором наши дети росли и становились бы учениками. Each morning our day starts and then finally marriage will be on the same page as your spouse. I always encourage families that are beginning to homeschool to pick a theme first for their children. <laughs> 